Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. I hope you're having a, a great Thursday so far. Hey, has anyone ever counseled you to just do it? I mean, you probably had some friends that encouraged you to just do stupid stuff, but I'm talking about where they really just wanted you to do something, but you didn't know how to do it. I mean, you're, you're saying, yeah, I'll do it, but I need someone to give me some explanation. And, and they just walked away and said, just do it, just get it done. I love our scripture passage today in Colossians 3 because the Apostle Paul issues kind of a blanket just do it statement, but he also gives some explanation as to how we can do it. Colossians 3 verses 16 and 17 say, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now, did you catch the, the blanket, just do it statement that Paul makes? He says, look, whatever you do in word or deed, do it representing Jesus. Do it in the name of Jesus so that God will, will receive praise from that. Um, and, and that's so simple and incredibly difficult, right? to have everything that you do represent Jesus. I mean, how in the world can we do that? Well, he actually kind of explains it in verse 16, if you'll look back at a few statements. First of all, you've got to have the Word dwelling in you, right? Isn't that where he begins? Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. So if you're, if you're going to represent Jesus in everything you do, then the Word of God's got to be in your life. You've got to absorb it into your heart, into your mind. And that's why the psalmist says, uh, your word I've hidden my heart that I might not sin against God. It, it, it really is about knowing God's word so that you can think and act and speak in accordance with God's will. You see, we really can't do God's will uh, apart from knowing and understanding his word. So if you want to represent Jesus in all your words and deeds, if you just want to do that, then uh, let the word dwell in you. And then the truth has to flow from you. Uh, he goes on to say in verse 16, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. Uh, there's there's got to be this piece that if the word of God comes into your life, it's going to come out your mouth. It's going to come out your actions. It's going to come out your choices, your decisions. And, and so you got to put the word in you, but then the word can't just stay in you. It's got to come out of you. You know, one of my pet peeves when I was working with uh, students years and years ago, so three decades ago, is I would approach uh, adults that had been studying the Bible for decades and, and loved Jesus and worshiped Jesus, and I would invite them to come work with students to serve Jesus, and they said, oh no, I can't miss my Bible study class. And I thought, well, that's immature. Right, Because they're not representing Jesus, they're being selfish consumers of spiritual wisdom, but they're not letting it flow out of their mouths, they're not you know, imparting it to anybody else. And, uh, and so I, 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 if we're going to represent Jesus, then not only does the truth need to go in, the truth needs to come out. Uh, best place for it to come out to, by the way, is at home with your family, with your kids. Uh, that's really the best place for the truth to come out. And, and then the... Uh, you know, kind of the third thing he mentions there is singing. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Hey, if, if you're going to really represent Jesus day in and day out, moment by moment, what are you listening to? What are you repeating? What are you teaching? What are you singing? See, all of those are the truth coming out of you, but it, it, it's in a really specific way because that reveals so much of our heart. You know, songs stick into our minds, they stick in our hearts. You see, you hear yourself humming them, singing them throughout the day. What are the, what are the songs that are ringing through your mind? Are they songs of praise and worship, or are they songs uh, that focus on the world? Look, there's nothing wrong with listening and enjoying uh, secular music, but what are the songs of your heart? And then finally, uh, if we're going to represent Jesus day in and day out, if we're just going to do that, then we've got to have gratitude. Because he ends verse 16 saying, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. We've got to live with grateful joy if we're going to represent Jesus day in and day out. And, and I don't understand how any of us as followers of Christ can't be joyful all the time. I mean, we are kind of told to rejoice always. 
Because if we know that we're forgiven, if we know that heaven is our eternal home, if we know that God loves us no matter what, how can we not smile and bless others in Jesus' name? Uh, then, if you, if you get those pieces of that all together, if the word of Christ is dwelling in you, if it's flowing out of you, if the songs are ringing uh, in your mind, in your heart, uh, if you're grateful inwardly and outwardly, then everything you do in word and deed will represent Jesus to the glory of God the Father. I hope that helps, and I hope you have a blessed day.